gas tungsten arc welding filler classification. This is not gas tungsten arc welding electrode classification, which is uh, completely different. We're talking about uh, filler metal specifically. If we were talking about electrodes, we would be talking about the EW, for example, TH-2, which is electrode W for tungsten thoriated 2%. So we are not talking about tungsten uh, electrodes. We're talking about the filler for non-autogenous welds. So when we actually want to add more filler, in which most cases we will uh, add filler rather than doing an autogenous bead where you do not add filler. So we have E, which is electrode here, and then rod, which really is what's important for us in this uh, explanation. So it is E electrode when it is used for GMAW. So just keep in mind the exact same wires are used for MIG and TIG. One is rolled up on a spool and maybe, you know, a 33 pound, 50 pound spool, while this is actually cut down to about three foot lengths of wire. They come in different sizes, uh, really small, uh, up to thicker, maybe 532. We usually use about 16th to uh, 1 8 inch rods, 332 in the middle uh, for most of what we do in our in our classes. Uh, so that is uh, electrode rod, so we're using the rod as our filler. Then we have the next two digits, 70 times 1000 PSI is your tensile strength. Tensile strength is trying to pull something apart, okay? S is the wire type solid. There is S or C uh, for anything that we're going to deal with. We're talking about S, which is solid. That is actually taking the wire, cutting it in half, and you will notice that it is a solid piece of metal. Typically, these wires are copper coated. It's a very thin layer of copper, and that does probably more for us when we MIG weld with this wire. Uh, it prolongs the contact tip life. It helps with the electricity um, because it's a better conductor between the contact tip and the actual filler filler metal, uh, but it does uh, protect the wire as it maybe sits out before it's used. Uh, rather than if it was solid steel, it would probably oxidize pretty quick in most shops. Uh, and then the last thing is dash whatever the X stands for. So it could be two, three, four, five, six, or seven. In our classes, we will look at using twos. Okay, we use pretty clean metal, so we don't need as much uh, deoxidizers in the actual filler rod. So there's a whole bunch of deoxidizers out there. The main are pretty much silicon and manganese. Uh, you know, there's others such as aluminum, titanium, zirconium, things like that, found in small amounts in these wires uh, to help clean the oxidation off the metal and other impurities, At you know, with that being said. Uh, so we use two for TIG, and we use ER70S-6 for MIG, which we want higher amounts to clean that base metal. Uh, that's pretty much it for steel. Uh, we also teach a little bit of stainless, so maybe we'll use like a electrode rod 308L. Um, 308, there's 309, there's 316, there's 316, there is... Uh, 347 there's a whole bunch of stainless rods but it's really uh, depending on what kind of base metal uh, you're going to weld on so there's obviously tons of different grades of stainless steel and then that L really just means low carbon so there's small amounts of carbon in the actual filler rod uh, for purposes that we discuss in metallurgy uh, ER4043 maybe ER5356 are two rods that we use in our shop Again, there's a 4,000 series or 5,000 series a filler rod, and we do use those for different purposes as well. Uh, but those are the three types of metals and three types of filler rods that we focus on in our classes.